In this episode of Trouts on the Water, we're headed to the land of Small Jaws, Michigan. The Mitten State is the birthplace of Trout Unlimited and is the home to a plethora of legendary trout streams. But that's not what we're in search of this go round. No, we're looking for popper smashing, streamer eating, swinging D chasing, 20 year old kings of the river. And there's one man for that job the legend himself, Mike Schultz. You know, wild native, they're sp- supposed to be there. You know, they behave like they're supposed to be there. I mean, it's they run, they run the show. You know, it's a fish that it's just always has to, you're, you got to be on them. You can't just like, you don't luck into big ones. You have to really be on them. Um, you know, I've heard in the people say, you know, not to point finger at trout guys, but the trout guys, oh, smallmouth fishing, smallmouth is easy. You know, Ridiculous. they're easy to catch. Yeah, it's easy to catch a dink smallmouth. Yeah, you can go out and catch a bunch. There's places you can go catch 50. But if you want to really dial it in and you want to target large fish, you got to put in your time. There's a lot of factors, you know, and that's what keeps it interesting, and it's, it never gets old. After a day of musky fishing on Lake St. Clair with Captain Colton, which admittedly went pretty well for some of us. Oh, dude, let's go! Holy shit! That was first cast, too. Oh, shit. We had two days to catch one of these 20-inch smallmouth. Was that enough time to grind one out? We started talking about how old a 20 inch fish is. How fast do they grow? A lot of people would call BS on a lot of it, but uh, the truth is they're, they're pretty dang old. So a 20 inch fish out of all the rivers we fish, even if it's a river that has just an abundance of bait fish to a river that one, one river of fish could be eating four to six inch fish, the river right down the road, it could be eating damselflies and dragonflies. I would say, the youngest, the, like the growth rate on Lake St. Clair puts a 20 inch fish at around 14 to 15 years. So in, you know, inland in a river, you know, I would say a 20 inch fish, the, the, the youngest it could possibly be would probably be around 15. Um, but I told you about that tagging thing, like that fish was 21 inches and it was like 19, 18 years old. And that was on Lake St. Clair. Right. So, I mean, Lake St. Clair, go on YouTube and look at some of the videos of the rock piles on Lake St. Clair. I mean, it's literally a refrigerator full of gobies and those fish can eat it whenever they want, you yeah. know, and it's not like that when you get on our waters inland. It's, it's right. a rough life. Having no frame of reference, the rivers in Michigan were kind of what I expected, but also not. They were beautiful green lots of wood, lots of down timber, lots of log jams, but they were much tighter than I thought. And it made for some really cool fishing scenarios. You couldn't have a big deep load in your back cast. It was quick load, put it to the wood. Uh, Lots of technical tight casts, lots of overhand casts, back casts, tuck casts, all the tricky stuff that you don't think you're gonna break out when you're warm water fishing, but it's really cool to do so, especially when it came together and you put that fly right up next to the log jam, right where it was supposed to be, and then immediately got paid. It was really fun fishing, Uh, less covering water and more stocking and hunting and really making your presentation count, which I I enjoyed. Day one, we were starting off our quest for 20 with the old reliable, top water, boogle bugs, poppers, frogs. Boogle bug fishing, which you guys saw. Uh, is is very uh, important to our game where you're fishing a popper, you're fishing it out front, you're being pretty patient with it. Um, you know, maybe not the most exciting form of fishing, but very effective.
Schultz, he said in the podcast that bugle bug fishing, I think his words were, not the most exciting fishing. I don't know what that guy's talking about. I had more topwater eats in day one than I had in my entire summer of bass fishing on the front range previous. Um, I like to watch bass eat poppers. It's super cool. It's really exciting. And I didn't realize not having as much experience as I thought I did, how bad I was at it. Um, you get the, the strip set kind of beaten out of you getting ready for saltwater fishing. When you go to Michigan, you need a trout set and I'm really bad at trout setting. So it was really cool to see them eat and it's made me a better angler since I've been back. I'm, I'm hammering that hook home on topwater eats and really trying to fish more topwater here because it's so, so good there. Schultz knows where the big fish live. Uh, there's lots of times where I saw water that looked absolutely gorgeous to me, a big log jam that I knew a fish was under, and Schultz would yell, save your arm. He's fished that water so much, he knows that if there is a fish there, it's probably not the one we want. And that in my naivete, as cool as it looked, as great as that water looked, he's fished it a hundred times and knows it's not worth the time. So we were making the cast that he knew counted to try to find that big one. Day two. After running into plenty of fish on top water, it was time to swing for the fences. It was time for Schultz's swing and D and a plethora of game changers. A lethal fly that works. I mean, it's it's erratic. It's not um, very unpredictable. And I remember when I first kind of figured it out, when I changed the head, I actually was out at Somerset, the summer, old Somerset show, and Mark was there. He'd always call me, not a text or not an email. Or, hey, you coming out? Yeah, I'm coming out. Hey, Mark, I got this new fly. I got to show it to you. So I give it to him. It's January. And then by like the next spring, he calls me. He's like, that thing is the most cons like craziest swimming thing I've ever seen. He's like, you're onto yeah. something, kid. So eventually it's changed. It's gotten longer. It's gotten shorter, you know, make it into different styles. But for our fish, the biggest fish, man, having that trigger, that, that extra, this thing is wounded. I'm not letting it pass. I mean, that is like the the trigger in a, in, a, in a predator's brain, they can't let that pass them. So they're gonna eat it yeah. more times than not. And they eat it hard. When they ate, I was I was hammering them. I wasn't missing as many fish. So it was cool to come tight on them. It was cool to see them eat the streamers. When they eat the poppers, it's like I said, it was awesome. They exploded on it, they sucked it in. But when they ate a streamer, it was a kill mission. They were gung-ho that they were going to absolutely demolish it and just see them laser down something that's just jerking and swimming erratically. It's, it's cool to see and everything's visual. I mean, we saw every single fish eat. And uh, for anyone that likes to sight fish, I mean, it's pure gold. Now we have to be real with ourselves. We came up an inch short, but it felt like we'd ran out of time more than anything else. Schultz was putting us in position to succeed. But as Mike said before, it's a grind. You don't just happen upon one of these 20 year old specimens. We will be back to put in more time and hopefully run into one of these ancient, legendary small jaws with the man himself.